Hello, my name is James Stone from jamesstone.com. And in this video, I'm gonna show you one of my favorite tools called browserstack.com. It's a paid service, it's not free, but they do have a limited free trial. I will warn you though, it only lets you use it a certain number of times. It's not like an unlimited trial with just a limited number of uses, but they give you a certain number of uses which completely expire at some point, at which point you need to purchase an account. So the website is browserstack.com and I'm going to explain the pricing first because I think it's a little bit confusing. I know I was confused about this at first. They have several different services, live, automate, screenshot, and responsive, and all of these different tiers, but I'm going to show you what I'm using uh, for my business. I use uh, this plan, which is called screenshot and responsive, and you'll see uh, they have a solo plan at $39 a month, so on and so forth. And you'll see right here, it says buy a single user light plan to use screenshots only. That is what I use. Build at $19 a month, monthly. So if you wanna use uh, what I'm using, or if you wanna go a little bit further, you can upgrade to another account, but this is usually fine for most of the things that I wanna do. So 19 bucks a month, or you can save a little bit if you buy a yearly plan. So what's really brilliant about Browser Stack is that you can basically plug in any website. So I'll use my own website www.jamesstone.com. And what's nice is you can select any of these browsers. So you have all the modern browsers, right? You have the most recent versions of Chrome and Firefox. Now, this is uh, not really a problem for me. So here's for Mavericks, Mountain Lion, Lion, so on and so forth. These are usually not a problem for me. I usually have the latest version of Firefox, Chrome, and Safari installed on my system, which is Mac OS X Mavericks. Usually what I'm doing when I use this software is a test cross browser compatibility. So I'm gonna show you how I might select some browsers and then how we might run this test. So sure, like you might just wanna go ahead and select the latest versions just in case, so you can kind of spot check that. But the big one that's really useful, especially on the Mac, is to be able to do Internet Explorer. Internet Explorer often has issues with rendering and can look different, especially using uh, frameworks like Foundation and 11, 10, 9, and 8. And these are usually the two problem areas, 7 and 6. I'm going to select those as well, just so you can get an idea. And then you might go ahead and select some older browsers and you might do Windows. So if you're on a Mac a lot, it's off, you know, always a good idea. Grab some earlier versions of Chrome, right? Maybe, uh, I don't know how far back you want to go with Firefox and maybe we'll even just check very quickly um, Safari. So you can select, I think, up to 25 browsers. Another advantage is you can also run mobile testing. So this is iOS version 5, iPad 2, 5.1, iPhone 4S. So I would run like the iPhone 4S. I would run maybe the iPad 2. And then you might want to run like the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus, which are new. So under Android, you can choose whatever you want here, but I typically look at like the Galaxy S3, the Tab 2. I might look at the Note 2. I'm not really concerned too much about Kindle Fire, but another good one to look at is the Nexus 7. Um, yeah, so I think, you know, we have a pretty good cross section here, 22 of 25 browsers selected. I'm gonna show you some of the other options down here below. So you'll see you can click to generate screenshots, but let's go to settings first. So what's really nice is the default is usually 1024 by 768, but I mean, who's really running a monitor that's that small? I think if you're testing to see how things are gonna look on laptops, 1280 by 960 is probably a better way to look and just assume maybe the screen isn't going to be quite as high. Uh, Windows resolution, you only have two choices, but again, I choose this. I mean, 1024 by 768 is a very small monitor. Compressed or original, if you're running any sort of JavaScript or animation or things that might take a while to load, maybe YouTube video embeds, you can increase the time here so that it takes longer before it actually takes a screenshot. Uh, final thing is mobile layout. You always wanna choose portrait. That's usually what you're concerned about with mobile at first, 
So run portrait first, you can always run a secondary one at landscape. And the most useful thing is to click on this email me on completion. When I first started using this service, it was quite fast and would render maybe just in about a minute or two. However, as time goes by, it's a little bit slower. And so now when I generate the screenshots, I usually just go do a spot check. So this is often kind of towards the end of a prototype just to check compatibility, or maybe it's before I'm gonna do another round of changes or I wanna see how the CSS is rendering, kind of doing a quick spot check. This is not perfect, but gives you a kind of a good idea how it might look in Internet Explorer, on Windows, so on and so forth. So I'm gonna click on generate screenshots and we'll come back after this is done rendering and take a look at what happened. Welcome back. And we can see that our test actually didn't complete. So this is actually pretty typical of how browser stack runs nowadays. And so often I get some that time out and you know, it didn't email me either, but you know, there isn't really another service that does this. So it's fantastic. So, you may get errors like this. So it's really great. You can see kind of like quick thumbnails of all the different browsers. You'll see that some of them like IE7, I'm not sure what happened here. Galaxy Tab 2 rendered this way. And you'll see the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus both errored out. Now, you have to take this with a grain of salt because maybe it actually is going to display under IE7. And I'll talk about in another video, another service that I use to actually test that in a VM. And it's possible that this is going to render fine as well. So if you get errors like this, don't worry. It's not the end of the world. Make sure you check it on a VM in a browser if you're concerned about it. Otherwise, just assume that it's okay. So you can click on any of these and it's going to give you kind of a full res version of what that page is going to look like. So this is Windows IE or sorry, IE 11 on Windows 8.1. And, you know, it looks looks pretty good. Not too bad. Um, I just started moving to SVG and I haven't extensively tested this, but you can see right here, it is handling SVG differently than most of the other browsers. So let's see if we find any other cons inconsistencies. Okay. So it looks like Windows IE 10 desktop and it looks like Chrome 22 is rendering the way I was expecting it to. Firefox, everything's looking great. Everything's pretty consistent. Here's IE9, I'm getting a similar issue. Now IE6, this is usually a big problem and you'll know that it isn't supported by Foundation 5. And what you typically get is this kind of gigantic mobile version of the website because media queries aren't handled in the same way on IE6 or 7. I don't try to support them on my website I don't really get any IE traffic, so it's not a big concern for me. But if it is, this is a good way to kind of check and see how it looks. This is the iPhone 4S portrait, so you get a good idea of how this is looking. Um, it gives you the full scrollable version, so if you're not you know, looking in Chrome or with another emulator, it's a great way to look. Here's the iPad portrait mode. This is kind of hard to design for. Tablet portrait mode often doesn't look great, but here, not too bad. So I'm. I'm pretty happy with that. Mavericks, so on and so forth. And we could click through all of these and let's take a look at the ones that look a little bit off. Let's look at IE7 Windows XP. That looks like it's probably an error or not working correctly. Galaxy Tab, nothing again. And these errored out. So it gives you like a really quick way you can go fire this off, maybe grab a coffee or something, come back when you get your email and then get a better idea of like how this is looking across browsers. Now it's not perfect. Don't expect everything to look exactly this way. You definitely wanna check in a VM or on a device or by looking on a machine with that particular browser if you're concerned about it, but it gives you a way to quickly spot, tech, spot check a page and see how it looks. Now here's a few things that are really useful. One thing is you can download all these files as a zip. So this is gonna download all the images. So if I wanna send these off in an email or include it in a presentation or anything like that, it's definitely easy to do. And you also have the share button. So now I can copy that. And now I can send this to anyone I want. Now these are private, they're not um, published in any sort of uh, index or anything like that. So if you email this to someone directly, no one else should have this kind of magic 
URL, but you could send this to a client or a stakeholder that wants to take a look, or if you're working with a developer and you're checking your site as well, this, this would give them basically access to all of the, um, you know, all the browser emulated windows that, that you took a picture of. So great feature, very useful and very useful for kind of pointing out like how the site looks like if you're doing a deliverable at the end, it's always good to show how it's going to look across a bunch of different browsers, especially if you took the time to make it look great in all of them, really useful feature. So there's one other really amazing feature about browser stack that I want to talk about, but it's basically the same type of thing, testing across different browsers, different operating systems, so on and so forth. So if you're like me, sometimes you're working on a project or code that's not yet public, maybe it's private, maybe you don't wanna put it on a public server where anyone can access it, maybe you don't wanna take the time to set up a local tunnel or something like that. Well, Browser Stack already thought about that use case and they created this really wonderful plugin for Chrome and it's called Local Testing. So I've already installed the plugin so all I have to do is click on start local testing. But the first thing I need to do is set up a server. I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Um, looks like I already had it running, but I use uh, Middleman uh, to develop my site. It's a static website generator and I have an alias and this basically just runs bundle exec middleman. And this will start the server on my local machine. And if you've ever used middleman, this should look really familiar to you. And so it says middleman is standing, watch at HTTP 0.0.0.04567. If you don't know what this means, it's the same as 127.0.1, or sometimes you see localhost. So I'm using iTerm. So if I hold on the command key, I can just click, open this up, and here we go. Albeit a little bit slower, we have the complete version of my website that's running off of my local Git repo. So this is gonna look the same, but you know, potentially you could be working on a different branch, a completely different site, something you're keeping private. So this is the same as localhost, and the port is 4567. So when I go back here and do start local testing, I'm gonna type in localhost, and I'm gonna type in my port number, normally it's 80, but I'm gonna type in 4567, if you're running SSL locally, you would add that and add the port number like 443. Or if you're running on a standard port like 80, you would change it here. Very easy, very straightforward. You can add a bunch more. I've never done that. You can also test static files. I haven't really used this either. I always use uh, Python, uh, simple HTTP server to run local servers anyways, or I use uh, MAMP or something like that. So I use MAMP or, you know, if it's a rack based thing like middleman, there you go. So click on finish. It's going to go ahead and test it. If you click here, it'll automatically put that URL localhost four, five, six, seven into the testing. So now I can do the same type of thing. I'm going to stop my oh, cancel that finish, finish. Okay, so if you wanna start over, one quick tip is this X right here will clear out all the browsers you've selected. So I'm just gonna run it on a couple just to kind of demonstrate how it's working, but let's go ahead and just run on IE 10 and 11. So only two browsers and I don't know, let's just use again, we'll see if it errors out, but the iPhone 6. You can go to settings, just make sure these all look the way we want it email me on completion, you're usually gonna to wanna to do that. And I'll just change the mobile layout to landscape. We'll be back in a few seconds, and here we go. And welcome back again. So this time it actually did finish successfully and sent me an email. So this is an example of the kind of email that you can expect if it does run successfully. You can see here it shows a couple of different examples, so you can quickly kind of spot check to see if there's any you know, changes or things that you might want to work on. I'm going to jump back over to browser stack so we can take a look. Same type of thing. You'll see that iPhone six didn't work correctly. We get a white screen, but at least it completed and sent us an email. 
It doesn't always finish, sometimes this hangs, so just be aware of that. Um, that's just kind of how it works. So this is gonna look really similar to what we looked at before. You can see the same type of error in IE with the SVG that I'm using. But the big difference here is that I'm running off of my local server in a specific port. So this is really fantastic if you're working on a private project that you don't wanna be public, if you're using a private branch that you don't wanna publish you know, onto your production server yet, this gives you a really great way to identify very quickly large problems that you may wanna fix. Now, if I wanted to fix this, for example, if I wanna go and correct this SVG problem, I actually use a different service. Browser Stack does offer a service that does that. It's called Live. And I find that the service is too expensive and, and I just don't particularly like their implementation for the cost of it. So I use another product called Sauce Labs. S-A-U-C-E-L-A-B-S.com. So I'm not gonna talk about that anymore in this video, but I am gonna create another video where I talk about how to run a VM for a specific browser type and to test back and forth on your local machine, your local dev machine, to test for browser compatibility and to fix issues like that. So thanks for watching. See you next time. Learn web development with James, books, screencasts, and more at jamesstone.co.